Hello, it's me again, the Weather Observer. Have you made any weather observations outdoors in the past two weeks? If yes, what types of clouds did you see? There are cumulus, stratocumulus, altocumulus, and altostratus. Are there any other kinds of clouds? Yes, of course. They're the high clouds that I'm going to introduce in this episode. The high clouds, the really highest clouds. Their cloud base is usually about 23,000 to 40,000 feet above the ground. Most of them are translucent and pure white. That's because high clouds are mainly composed of ice crystals. The names of the three clouds in the high cloud family aren't as confusing as the names of the medium and low clouds. Their names are more focused. They're as curly as Dr. Tin's hair. The first type is the filamentous cirrus, or CI. The second type is the granular cirrocumulus, or CC. The last one is the thin veil-like cirrostratus, or CS. From my past experience in observing the weather, I've gained three conclusions from observing high clouds. They're easy to identify. They're hard to be seen. They're beautiful. First, why are they easy to identify? It's because each of the three types of high clouds is very unique. It's hard to mix them up when observing the weather. The first type of high clouds is called cirrus or CI. CI is a filamentous cloud, so it's in the form of filaments, very clear, and fibrous features can be seen. The appearance is smooth and soft. Cirrus is always whiter than other clouds. And so, sometimes at sunset, when the sun goes down and turns other low and medium clouds into yellow or orange colors, cirrus can still stay white. By contrast, at dawn, cirrus is the first to be colored by the sun during sunrise. The second type of high clouds is cirrostratus, or CS. CS is like a transparent whitish veil, covering the sky evenly. Sometimes it has an irregular appearance. It can be imagined as a piece of lace covering the topmost sky. CS is composed of ice crystals too. When sunlight passes through it, sometimes an optical phenomenon called halo may occur. The halo is the best evidence to distinguish CS from AS because only CS can produce halos. The third type of high clouds is cirrocumulus, or CC. CC is a tiny white patch or a thin sheet cloud. Remember that it's without shading. Most of these patches have a visual width of less than one degree. If you don't know what a visual width of less than one degree is, you should watch my previous videos. If the sky is full of CCs, the older generation would call it mackerel sky. Mackerel sky wasn't welcomed in the past because when there's a mackerel sky, it means the weather will deteriorate. So there's a proverb, mackerel sky, not 24 hours dry. My second conclusion is, it's hard. When I say hard, I don't mean that high clouds are rigid. I'm saying that high clouds aren't easy to be observed. The reason is that high clouds sometimes can be very thin. So thin that you may think they're not there. Let me tell you a funny story. I once brought a group of people to observe the weather at the rooftop of the observatory. There were neither medium clouds nor low clouds and the sky was a pale blue. At that time, I was like a psychic, telling people around that look there, there are some clouds. Over there, there are clouds too. I was the only one getting excited. Everyone else was so stunned because they couldn't see a thing. They couldn't see the clouds because they were lacking experience. The clouds were very thin that day. The thin clouds in the sky turned the original blue sky into a very pale light bluish one. Most people have never seen a blue sky without a single cloud. So it's not surprising that they couldn't notice the very thin clouds. 
there's another situation that makes high clouds difficult to be seen. It's at nighttime when there's no light source. Even experienced weather observers need more time to observe high clouds through the help of the stars, the moon, etc. Hence, weather observers have a love-hate relationship with high clouds. They're easy to identify, but also hard to be seen. However, we love them a bit more because as long as high clouds appear, you can only use one word, beautiful, to describe them. In addition to being very beautiful, high clouds are also accompanied by many fascinating optical phenomena. The first phenomena is the halo. It can be classified as sun halo and moon halo. To put it simply, when the sunlight or moonlight shines through the ice crystals of the high clouds, the light will be refracted to form an aura around the sun or the moon. The inner color of the aura is pale red and the outer color is purple or white. Another special optical phenomena is called sun dogs. This is the case when bright spots with luminous tails appear to the right and left of the sun at the same altitude. This phenomena is called sun dogs. This other one is easy to recognize, the corona. When sunlight or moonlight shines through the cirrocumulus, the light is diffracted and forms a corona. Corona's color gradually changes from an inner whitish to reddish brown on the edge. The three cloud families have been introduced. I hope that you can try your best to go outdoors and observe the clouds with your own eyes. In addition, the observatory will organize weather observation courses. I hope I can meet you all in the observation courses in future. Goodbye.